What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out Jim Cornette's review of CM Punk's confrontation with Seth Franklin Rollins on WWE Raw. I love when they they call him Seth Franklin Rollins. I love when they they give these wrestlers these nicknames. It's it, it shit's hilarious. A lot of you guys wanted me to check out some more Jim Cornette stuff, and I have been personally looking forward to hearing his takes on the CM Punk Seth Rollins promo that they had just recently on monday night raw so i was waiting for them to actually drop this video and i wanted to you know kind of do a reaction with you guys as well because you guys have been wanting me to check out some more jim Cornette stuff so that's what we're gonna do i want to see what he has to say about this promo because me personally this promo segment between seth and cm punk was fantastic fantastic and i hope we see more of a serious seth rollins than the ah and the you know the the craziness of seth rollins i want a more serious character from him i want to see it elite a little bit more so we'll see what he has to say appreciate all love and support let's get right into this one man well speaking about things that make sense i don't know how much of raw you uh think you're going to be talking about here but why don't we uh we're talking about the segment and the ratings it did. Why don't we talk about the punk segment right now? Yes, please. Well, I think we should. Please. Because it's it's only one page in. There wasn't much in the first hour to f***ing no. notate. And this is why we call it the big 9 o'clock hour right here. The big 9 o'clock hour. Um, And Adam Pierce was in the ring. And he introduced, of course, the man who's going to make his decision. Where is he going to go? CM Punk. And suddenly... Like Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Every time. In a best selling tea. <laughs> Here we go. Good job. That he got good. the ovation. He got the viewers. He got the ratings. He's selling merchandise. Yeah. The music comes down. He's got the chance. And yep. Pierce sends him the mic. And here's the thing about we'll talk about the story he told a second, but the fact that again, he told a story. He talks to people. Everybody else almost is talking at them, mm. reciting things to them, at them, but mm -hmm. he's not talking, or they're not talking to the people. And in, in the wrestling, in the territory days especially, whether everybody likes it or not, uh, the heels, but uh, even the over baby faces, they were over-the-top personalities or they were boisterous or they were trash talkers or shit disturbers that got you interested in themselves and mm -hmm. and what the fight was and that, that they were going to be involved in, the issue. That was what drew money. In modern times, it is, it is unfashionable to have a personality <laughs> or to be a, a boisterous, shit-talking fucking over the top fucking yahoo like goddamn handsome jimmy valiant or whatever the fuck but the 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 point still remains that you have to believe what somebody is saying mm -hmm. so even if again having a personality these days is frowned upon in this environment punk has a personality you know he's got that Twinkle in his eye, as Mama the, Cornette might not say. Not the twinkle in the eye. He's got that smart-ass <laughs> tone edge, but at the same time, you believe he's probably a good guy until maybe he's not. Mm -hmm. But he talks to people. He tells them a story. He says shit that sounds like he believes it. In a lot of cases, he does. It is genuine. And he then, as Jerry Jarrett used to say, tell people the truth as long as you can that they know to be the truth because then when you work them for the sake of the wrestling, mm. they don't know where one starts and the other stops. That's but punk is that's, that's really a good a concept, especially when it comes to wrestling. That's why some of our favorites, they're able to spin a situation to make you truly believe what they're saying is actually real play into the narrative of what they see online so well that at the end of the day, you don't know what's real and what's work. And it's getting harder to do that, obviously, with social media. But when you can really blur those lines, telling most of the truth until you get into the wrestling side and start working the fans, you got it. And there's not many wrestlers that can do that. They can really sell you on what they're saying. 
And probably what they're saying is actually true and actually how they feel and actually may have happened. But then they add a little bit of the, the work into it and you don't know what's real and what's fake and what they're saying. I love that. That's the best part of wrestling. Love it. One of the he best talks parts. Two people. He's genuine in that respect. And a lot of these people, to them, he's come back to wrestling for the first time. They didn't they didn't pay enough attention. It wasn't this week or their week to watch AEW where they mm -hmm. had paid enough attention that there was another wrestling show. For some people, yeah. So yep. for this, it's brand new for these people. Yep. So he's breaking a little bit of the same ground, but in a different fashion and in a whole lot bigger platform. But do you do you agree with me on that? That almost everybody, Brian, these days, we talk about it reciting, memorized. It's like they might as well have a guy doing an in-ring promo just open on the ring with curtains mm. and have the curtains open. And he, you know, by the last breath of the four winds that blow, I'll have revenge <laughs> upon Fortunato. It's a fucking play. You can't believe it on an emotional level or get interested in somebody except for a few of the breakthrough wordsmiths. Just wait until they have a 20 minute segment with Cody and punk in the ring in the future, because then it'll really show the dichotomy between the ways of speaking. Mm -hmm. But WWE has a lot of that. Some guys pull it off. LA Knight speaks above the audience, but to them punk is telling a story mm. in a down to earth way, whether you like him or not, that's just the way he delivers it. Yes. And then you have people, I mean, I hate to single out one of your favorites, but like Austin Theory. Mm. I can't believe anything this guy says. Yeah. He doesn't know how to... He knocked... He, bruh, bruh, he said it. And all a lot of us have felt the same way. It's not that Austin Theory can't be a very great talent. I just... What he's saying, you just don't buy. John Cena even said it himself when he was cooking him right before WrestleMania. The stuff you say, we just don't buy. And maybe John was trying to light that fire and maybe get him to that point. But anything Austin Theory says, no matter how good he is in the ring, you just, you don't care because you just don't buy it. You don't. It's not his fault. I think he's very talented. And hopefully he can find his voice and, and find that rhythm and that motion where he can be like, yeah, you know, I want to believe what he's telling me. That's That's really... 90% of the battle in wrestling, making people believe. And it's harder to make people believe nowadays with technology and social media. So that's a very good comparison there. I, I like Austin Theory. I want him to be much better and they book him better. But I don't care for him because half the shit he say, I just don't believe in anything he's saying. It's not his fault. He may take a little bit of blame of that. But they got to do something with him because he's very talented to deliver it yet he was he was headed in that direction and then he just kind of started floundering in every category but yeah. i think it still can be there but the, mm -hmm. somebody needs to be working on it he needs yeah. to be working on it yes he might, might ought to be in goddamn not even nxt he ought to be an ovw or <laughs> somebody in two tv markets is seeing him give him the whole show and let him just take over and see if he can bring it out but nevertheless but the mm. other issue is not a lot of guys and, well let me say what what you said hold on i'm still Respond to find you as far as Cody, there's room for that too, because he's so dramatic. Dusty was dramatic mm -hmm. in his own every man, son of a plumber way. You've got <laughs> LA Knight, who's the, the wrestler guy. You've mm -hmm. got CM Punk. Who's the modern guy. You've got fucking Cody. Who's the dramatic guy. Mm -hmm. It's in the territories. Everybody was different. They had a different style, personality outlook, except for the people who were just there to just fucking wrestle mm -hmm. and they could be interchangeable. So it's, oh, they, they're, they're baby faces and Jey Uso, I think he's different than all of, he's yeeting all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> yes, nobody else is yeeting. <laughs> so they're all different that's what they've got going for them too i think triple h may have figured this out that what vince vince was just cookie cutter and a lot of fucking people mm -hmm. what i was gonna say is punk has one thing also going for him and that he's already a star and he's established how he talks when he talks what he does a lot of people would not get that opportunity to go out there and be more natural in what they're saying and, and that's that's another fair point the script 
And that may be a case with Austin Theory. He may not even have that opportunity. I think it's a combination of him, and I do think management need to let him be a little bit more free. Let him let more of himself come out into the character. Because right now, they, they just got him on autopilot and look like he's heading straight into a mountain. Like, he's not really going nowhere. But unfortunately, from a lot of the guys that I see, the way they do the written stuff, I'm not sure they'd be that much better at the fucking ad lib. But anyway, so Punk, the promo, mm -hmm. he drew the analogy to Cleveland and that arena and what it had meant to him through his career. It, he, you know, had his, like his, I don't know if it was a tryout, dark match, whatever, but he debuted in Cleveland and they, uh, he passed that test apparently and got sent to OVW. And then he came back later on when he was on the roster to Cleveland as the world champion. And I guess that's where Orton kicked him in the head and he got a concussion and they stripped him of the title. And then that was where that he did the, uh, he basically walked out and as he mm -hmm. said, took himself off the hamster wheel mm -hmm. 10 years ago, almost to the day. And everybody in Cleveland that was there, they're the, faithful WWE fans, they knew that to be true. And so then he said, you know, if anybody was disappointed or betrayed because I, because I went home, because I couldn't take it, whatever. He felt the same way when Piper went to WCW. So if you were mad at me, I understand. And I apologize. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't he say, I'm sorry to the box? Because <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't. <laughs> And then, you know, he talked about the offers that oh everybody made, but Pierce put the best deal together of all. See, if Punk is not going to be beating Pierce up in the near future, I do not believe. Like, mm -hmm. Orton can get away with with Aldis because of the different personality and dynamic. And his mind was made up when he saw Cleveland on the schedule. Ten years ago, I walked out, and now I've walked right back in, and congratulations, Adam Pierce. CM Punk is home. And he signed mm, the contract. This this is when things and got pretty good. Again, that's perfect. You know, he it takes you on the ride <laughs> with him with enough of the inflections and asides and everything. But at the same time, you don't get, it's not like, oh God, can he get to the point? Oh God, I wish this would be over. Like a lot of the other stuff, because it's not coming from their heart mm. and their mind. Mm. And there's not a, you know, when, when they've got these other guys saying these ridiculous things, there's not that level of connection fair point but i thought a, a good job there boom gets the pop and uh, do you have any comments before the worm turns good job there at some of the points where he was talking like you said not really speaking at the audience or past the audience they got quiet to hear what he was going to say and i wanted yeah. to see how they were going to react there good promo though and then here comes the music of Seth Franklin Rollins. <laughs> and, and he still gyrated and <laughs> capitulated to the ring. Not gyrated. But when they get in the ring, there's the big face off and the stare down. And mm -hmm. they milked it. Mm -hmm. And it, in a while, and the fans first, had, they started to rumble and they started to, whoa. Or, oh, God damn, I can never remember his tune. Oh, whoa. whoa. <laughs> Whatever the fuck they did his, <laughs> and then as soon as Seth says "Welcome to Monday Night Rollins," and said "Don't dare call this place your home," well then they start chanting for Punk, mm -hmm. and they've created a dynamic here where they're not switching Seth baby or heel. Yeah, they don't have to. He's just not gonna goddamn have him. He's the there's always the one sob in every crowd, right? Mm -hmm. And at least not right now. I do think at some point they may switch him heel because he's gonna obviously CM Punk is gonna be the over big. He's gonna be the bigger babyface in the situation. But I can see them doing that at some point. But at the same time, the people are glad and back, happy to see Punk back, and so the, but they're interested in this. Mm -hmm. and Seth's story is you abandoned this place 10 years ago and you spent that time trying to tear it down and slander to everybody <laughs> it's my home and the talent are my brothers and sisters and I'm going to protect the fans from people like, like you, you. Yep. he says I with every fiber of my being I hate you I wish <laughs> he just said 
I loathe you. <laughs> From hell's heart. From hell's heart. <laughs> I loathe you from hell's heart. Everybody said, but if, if you're going to be part of the WWE, I want you on Raw. Because the truth always comes out, and this is your last chance. Either you're going to self-destruct and blow up and you'll be done, or if by a miracle you have changed and you've got enough, enough gas left in your tank or whatever, Maybe then you're going to fight me for the world title and I'll expose you for a fraud mm -hmm. and show you that I'm the best in the world. Mm -hmm. And the whole time Punk is, is looking at him and sitting there and taking it. Yeah. And then he says, "Are you, Punk says, are you, are you done? Then that's <laughs> your one pass to talk to me disrespectfully and get away with it. Just frivolously, if you will. <laughs> and... And then it, it, he called, Punk called for Adam Pearce said, hey, just to let you know, CM Punk is entering the Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. And when I win, maybe it's you that I'm going to be coming after. Because remember, we were speculating, if you will, <laughs> mental masturbation <laughs> on who, if he wins the Rumble, he might challenge. And let's face it, so far the real champion in everybody's mind is Roman Reigns, but yeah. if you've got Seth Rollins and now CM Punk, mm -hmm. and Punk was to win that, mm -hmm. then you're starting to make a case for it, maybe. Yeah. But anyway, point is, they they then left in a huff, as they say, and that was 15 minutes, and it wasn't boring for one of the first times in Raw history. <laughs> <laughs> Great segment. Leaves you wanting more. I'll say this about Rollins. I think he does one of the best serious faces there. When he's not talking, <laughs> when he's not laughing, either him just looking dead on at the person and obviously being angry or him slightly smirking, that's so effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the fact that when Punk says that's your one free shot, Mm -hmm. He didn't break into like just hysterical laughter or something. Yeah, no, he was serious. Punk would have had to have done something. It played out perfectly, and yep. it leaves you wanting more, and it leaves you wanting Rollins versus Punk at some point. Uh, like I said, if they give us more of serious Seth Rollins, I'm here for it. Me personally, that gimmick, it's it's kind of run its course. The whole dancing, flamboyantness, all that, that's cool. It was cool. Not, not my cup of tea. But I think give us a serious Seth Rollins because he knows if I'm him, character wise, storyline wise, I need to turn it up because I know CM Punk is he's that guy that's going to try to take this championship from me. So I got to show why I'm the best in the world. I got to stop playing around. I got to stop BSing. That's how I would do it. If character wise, if I'm booked in that situation, I'm going to turn it up a little bit. And it shows that effect. That CM Punk has. Now Seth's not joking around. Nah, he's proving, he's trying to prove a point to someone at the expense of everybody else. So I don't know. See what they do with that though. I can I, I can see both of those guys for obviously for the same reason of wanting to get the thing over, both of those guys realizing or knowing that Seth can't really cackle too much over this if mm -mm. he really fucking hates the guy which is the point of the whole thing he's he wouldn't be doing his whole yeah you know he would be the boogeyman handsome jimmy valiant with the fucking eye patch on going and i will <laughs> instead of whoo messy so hopefully we'll get more of that and punk <laughs> in the rumble again they have cody announced yeah. for the rumble they have punk announced for the rumble well, I think we knew Punk was going to be in the Rumble as soon yeah, as, of as we did. you know, we saw him. But, I, you know, at least he's he's come out and said it. Mm -hmm. My gosh, with over a month to promote it. Imagine that. Whew. He's going to be working a couple of house shows already announced. MSG and I think one in California. Do you have him wrestle on TV before the Rumble? I asked you this before. Do you have him wrestle before the Rumble? And you said no. Why? I believe they already announced that he's supposed to be re uh, wrestling Dominic Mysterio. I think on this upcoming Monday Night Raw. Um, so he probably will wrestle. But before they get into the, uh Jim gets into his point, I would at least have him wrestle at least once. Definitely. And I think Dominic would be the perfect person for him to wrestle because we all love to see Dominic get beat up. So I believe that's the rumor match. 
But even if that wasn't a rumored, ma rumored match, I would still at least be cool with him wrestling once. For sure. You know, so that way people can, who haven't seen CM Punk wrestle in a long time and who didn't watch AEW, see him back on WWE television wrestling as well, <clears throat> that could be a good thing. Why would you? And now they announced it for house shows. Well, but that's, okay, we should have put a finer point on that question. I, w I still would not have him wrestle on television before the Rumble unless it is, and let, me go, let me go back on that now as I'm saying it. If it was a perfect opportunity with an opponent that, you know, he could just shine with a little short something and mm -hmm. somebody run in and do something physical, whatever the fuck, if they're doing an angle, that's fine. I would not give a legitimate main event top restaurant quality yeah, 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 yeah. match no, for away sure. on free television before for sure. the Rumble, but a for match sure. to reassure the people in their mind that he can still go because they haven't seen him in time. And I think that's the match they're supposed to be having with Dominic. That's why Dominic's in that in that situation because Dominic can always take a loss because people hate him so much and he'll still be over. 10 years. Uh -huh. And what the fuck he can do and then maybe to juice something up for the Rumble, mm -hmm. I could see doing that. But uh, house shows I wasn't even thinking about, but in Madison Square Garden, yeah, I'd, I'd add punk mm -hmm. to Madison fucking Square Garden. They'll draw a million dollars. I mean, they were going to draw close to that, if not more anyway. They'll draw another several hundred thousand probably if they add him. So, yeah, the garden, if if it's California, Los Angeles, or the greater Hollywood, California market, whatever the fuck, yes, I can see doing that, but... and. The people there live are going to see it, but that doesn't spoil anything related to a nationally televised pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. Well, Jim, they say that CM Punk is straight edge. In fact, he says it. And in fact, he uses the straight edge of a knife to cut his <laughs> steak for dinner. No, the, the segue into the sponsorship. <laughs> Fucking crazy. But yeah, man, over. They, they enjoyed it as I expected them to. Highlight of this previous Monday Night Raw. I mean, CM Punk, Seth Rollins, we're waiting for our full course meal when it happens at WrestleMania. I think that's the story they're going with. I think that's the story they should go with. You don't need to do anything with Roman right now. Build towards that. Tease that. We have plenty of time for that. Don't have to rush that. But Seth Rollins, CM Punk, sign me up like I always say. Comment down below let me know man some other videos you guys want me to check out appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel road 250k and i'm still getting to be the youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all next one peace